Hey, this is Nick from JingFX. I'm going to be telling you about the directional blur node. This is a node that requires an input texture as well as a UV input to actually function properly. So you can see here we have a UV radial plugged into this particular directional blur. Now if I go back to the end here, and now I select this and say I move it, you can see that the blur is actually dependent on the location of the UV as well as uh, say the intensity of the UV and it is also dependent on the type of UV. So if I come in here and I plug in something, say like a UV noise, it's gonna give me some really interesting results. So, but I can go ahead and plug this back in and we can maybe reset this position, maybe reset my strength here. And now we have something like this. Now you'll notice that we also have some chromatic distortion. And so that's another thing that the directional blur node allows you to do. So if I go down the chain here and I come to this directional blur, we can see that we actually have something called chroma shift. So this is going to allow us to shift um, the image based on, once again, another uh, input. And in this case, I am using the same UV radial. And so that would change, uh, you know, the various chroma shift based on what I'm doing with my particular uh, UVs. Now, you'll notice that if I come in here and I bring in, say, a directional blur, and let's just take uh, any random shape here. Uh, and then let's go ahead and do like a noise or something like that. And so now uh, that we have this particular blur, you will notice that we do not have chromatic options. And so the reason for that is, is if we come over here, you have to be using a colored input. It cannot be grayscale for chromatic uh, aberration or chromatic shift to actually work uh, with this particular node. So now that you've kind of seen an example of like a lens flare and things like that of, of what this um, particular node can do, we're going to go ahead to our tutorial file uh, that I've gone ahead and created for this particular tutorial. And so in this particular instance, we are using a UV identity. If we preview this uh, particular node, you can kind of see here that this basically just creates a uh, tiling UV of various sorts. Uh, based on the preview over here. And if we look at the directional blur, it's just creating this interesting uh, vertical line. Now going into say something like this, let me go ahead and play the timeline so that we can see uh, these various inputs changing over time. And so right now the strength is changing and so you can see that happening kind of slowly. Um, but what's happening here is we have a UV noise, we are distorting this particular shape and this is the end result. And so you can see that it's pretty interesting uh, to create some pretty cool, you know, like ethereal patterns and things like that. And of course, like everything is completely dependent on the scale of, of the actual uh, UV noise and so on. And so this right here is the actual pattern or the flow map, so to speak, that this directional blur is going to be following to warp whatever your input image actually is. And so then if we go over here to say this one, this right here is an example with like a UV polar. And so if I just kind of play this back and forth, uh, you can see the oscillator doing its job. UV polar is very weird, but uh, this is what happens whenever you distort uh, this little circle here. Um, another interesting one is say UV rate, uh, ro rotational. And so in this particular case, uh, you can see that it is creating a uh, very, I would call this like a small point light or a pin light or something like that. Uh, it's a very interesting way to get a unique glow. Now, of course, you can just go in and say edit, you know, the intensity remap curve or something of your shape uh, and get an effect just like this. But it is interesting to know that you can create, you know, an animated version with something like a UV rotational and so on. And then, of course, you know, if we do come over here and we kind of change the location and stuff, we're going to get a lot of really, really interesting, weird effects. And so there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with this particular node. Going down again to UV radial. This is the most common node that I use uh, time and time again. And so you can just see that this right here allows you to create really, really interesting um, glows of all sorts, you know, whether it's a lens flare or it's some kind of uh, thing for a light or you need God rays or some kind of magic stuff or whatever it happens to be. Like UV radial is usually um, one of the best possible nodes you can use uh, with directional blur. And you can see the animated uh, version here. And then finally, we do have, uh, say, a UV directional. That's just going to give us a singular uh, solo direction. 
and it's going to allow us to blur an image uh, in any direction that we want. Now, with this particular node, we do have, uh, say, various directions we have, you know, is, uh, for our distribution here, or rather our direction, uh, we have, say, forward, backward, and bidirectional. And then we have uh, for the sample distribution, so each basically tick uh, along this directional line is a sample. And you can see that we can change like our distribution ramp if we want to kind of change the weight of the sample distribution. And we do have these various uh, distribution types, right? So you just kind of go through the arrow keys and see what they all look like. And that is pretty interesting. So going up to actual uh, use cases, so similar to the lens flares, if you want things um, like say maybe this is a ground impact, uh, I have a UV noise, I'm plugging that into a shape here, uh, which is basically just a, a little circle. So we're distorting that. And then we have this um, polar scatter node. And so I'm scattering this shape around to give me some randomized uh, shapes. I have a UV radial, and this particular UV radial is using um, basically uh, chaos and so if I come here look here we can see this chaos multiplier and so this right here is going to help give us um, some really interesting streaks and chaotic noise and then we take this into the directional blur and in this case I'm using all the default settings and I'm just uh, changing the directional blur distance and of course if you want to you can always go in and do something like a um, you know maybe a modulation intensity if uh, for whatever reason you wanted to so we can come in here and you know change say which actually this is the wrong thing so this is just kind of a freehand tutorial so let's see i actually want to do something like this and so if we brought in say a noise um, we can actually change say our scale like this so make sure we have our intensity on and so now this right here is basically going to change um, where the blur is applied based on this distance modulation and so you could potentially get some really interesting effects uh, by doing this, uh, making sure that, you know, maybe you have uh, maybe not as many octaves or something like that. That could give you some really interesting uh, different variations in your blur, I think. And so another one, we have another polar scatter directional blur, but we are changing it to be colored and so that we can do a chromatic distortion. And so we're using UV radial, we're adjusting the levels and then adding glow to it. And so one thing to note is that if we added, say, the glow uh, to this first and then plugged it in, um, it's not necessarily going to grab um, the colors quite as well, uh, it, at least normally in my experience. Um, so I usually like to do a glow after a directional blur, especially if I'm doing any kind of chromatic stuff, because I find that it preserves colors a bit better and it, it takes these colors that we have and so let's see here, let me go ahead and break these links. We'll grab this, plug that back in. And I feel like it just gives us a lot better uh, color range um, because it's actually taking these individual colors and making them glow versus having some kind of grayscale um, glow that it's trying to do a chromatic distortion on. And so because it could actually try and distort the, the glow colors itself, if that makes sense. Um, and then I have one other example of kind of an interesting use case uh, for directional blur. And so we have this noise and then we have a UV radial, but inside of the blur here, I'm actually using minimum. And so what this kind of allows it to do is it kind of takes these um, colors. We've got bi bi-directional and symmetrical chosen. And then with our blur mode, it creates this really interesting, almost like lightning like pattern or like it, uh, it kind of like subtracts um, from some of the, the inside shapes. And so this is a really interesting um, effect that I found just by playing around. And then one last thing is doing something like a UV rotational and creating really interesting uh, spiral patterns, which are you know very commonly used in something like visual effects. Um, and so it's really quite cool to just kind of come in, you know, play with all this stuff, see how directional blur can uh, improve your workflow. And hopefully this tutorial helped. Like I said, very simple node. Um, you know, just wanted to show you some examples of how this works. You need a UV, you need to plug in some kind of input and just go explore. Um, explore using different UV types. You'll notice that if we kind of go here, we have a bunch of different UV options that you can choose. Uh, you know, you can use say a derivative from say something like a noise. So we can come here, we can do derivative, UV from derivative.
and do something, you know, kind of crazy or weird. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. Um, it's a lot more powerful than just your usual blur node as you get to control the direction. And if you're doing any kind of chromatic uh, shifting or chromatic aberration or something like that, this is a fantastic node uh, to actually do that versus having to come in and build out, you know, a bunch of different transform nodes and then, um, you know, remerge your RGB channels and stuff like that. So it's really, really powerful and you can do all sorts of crazy, crazy stuff. So hopefully this helped. I'm trying to keep this tutorial quick. I will catch you later.